Hi everybody and welcome to How to Find a Great Partner because one of the biggest problems that I see and that my clients come to me with is how do I find someone that's super amazing and how do I keep ending up in these relationships that don't suit me? Ah, you can't wiggle too much. <laughs> so back to it, have you ever gotten out of a relationship and thought, why and how on earth did I get there in the first place? That's why it's really important to know what you want in a partner. And I'm not talking about like, oh, I hope they ski and I hope they're not alcoholics. I mean, what are those things, those natural values that they actually have in the world? So when you see them interact with other people, what are those traits that they carry naturally so of course they're gonna have with you. You know that those traits aren't gonna go away once you get over the honeymoon stage of your relationship, right? So imagine now you're watching your partner and seeing them do in the world supernaturally the cooking or the treating people with respect or caring about the environment or being active or being dedicated about money or whatever it is that's a really strong trait that you want in a really great partner, imagine you see that doing, them doing that on their own. You're not trying to change them into it. They're not doing it just because of you. It's part of their natural state and you have the trust and the confidence that that will never, ever go away. Wouldn't that be great? So what I want you to do is write down your list of non-negotiable things in a partner. What are those traits that you want to see them carry in the world? And the ones that you have to have, the ones that you can't live without, the ones that you know will contribute to your own sense of well-being, your own sense of safety, your own sense of connection, and your own sense of safety within and equality within the relationship. So list those things. And if you're in a relationship not right now, get a bird's eye view. If you asked a friend, if you asked a therapist, if you asked an outside person, are you getting those things? Does that person you're with have those traits already? The answer should be unanimously yes. And if not, maybe you need to reconsider or maybe you need to look at other ways that they suit you. But the second problem that I see is that when we start writing down our list of what we do want in a really great partner, it ends up being really superficial. So I hope they hike, I hope they bike, I hope they you know, aren't messy around the house. How about big things that include that? So maybe they don't hike and you might miss out on a great partner because they don't hike, but they're super active in other ways. Maybe they windsurf, maybe they run all the time. Maybe hiking something that you can introduce them to because they like being active, because they like exploring. So instead of looking at these little things that they do, what are the big things that they are naturally, right? How do they carry that? So now imagine you're with somebody who doesn't wanna change you and hold you back, but who you don't also have to change. And their traits, their way of being in the world, their things that are on your list also help you grow. So now maybe you didn't ski and they didn't hike and you get to share that with each other. And now you're growing something together and you can really develop a really great partnership with shared common values and interests. Wouldn't that be great? So do that, take that list for yourself. And if you're not sure what you want, if you're like, you know, I've never had that great of a list. I've never had that great of a relationship. Write down all of the things that were bad about your old relationship. So maybe they were messy. Maybe they were disrespectful. Maybe they drank too much. Maybe they, whatever. And turn those into positives. Tip three. First, have you ever given someone the benefit of the doubt? Well, they don't really have that, but maybe they're just having an off day. Maybe it was my fault they didn't communicate well. Maybe it was my fault. Maybe it was a misunderstanding. I should have communicated better. I should have been more clear. And you take on 
these red flags as if they don't exist. Have you ever done that? Even just a little bit? Ignore the signs or maybe hope the relationship would work out even though there are these things saying, mm, I don't really know if this is the right thing for me. So what if there were no red flags? What if as soon as you started seeing that your potential partner doesn't have these amazing traits that you want in the world, that you stepped out. You said, hey, you're really great, but you're not the right partner for me. Because wouldn't it be great to have a partnership where everything brings you closer, or at least most of the solid things bring you closer rather than fall apart? So do have an exit strategy ready as you're dating, or even if you're in a partnership, how are you gonna communicate? This is what I need, and I'm sorry, it's just not gonna work out. Right? Your exit strategy is your own thing. So knowing what you want, what you need, what you don't want in these broader ways helps you have that confidence of really being able to check off your list. Is this a great partner for me? Learn some emotional freedom techniques. Learn some tapping. Learn some breath work. Learn some meditation. Practice with your friends on how to say, it's okay, I'm done. Fourth thing, this is kind of your bonus, when you are ready to let somebody go, make sure that you understand it's nothing personal. Because one of the problems I see is people fear rejection themselves so they don't let somebody go when it's time to let them go. So instead of projecting that they might take it personally or they might not feel good enough or that you'll feel guilty for letting them go, just imagine instead that by breaking the relationship now, you now have an opportunity to find somebody that suits you and so do they. So instead of both of you wasting time, wasting energy, wasting effort, being stressed out, feeling like you're not getting what you need, maybe being in a toxic space or a toxic relationship, now you get to respect and honor yourself and them by saying, this is not working and I need to be done. It doesn't mean they're bad people. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just means that the cycle has ended. So if you like this video, go check out my description, subscribe, hit that bell, and look at the description page. I offer a series of events that help you not only find your ideal relationship, making your ideal relationship even stronger, and if you need to, how to clear those emotions so you can have a healthy and safe and easy breakup or increase that intimacy. I'm Dawn Bennett. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.